compiled. So I'll save you time. It will run. It will not run on M1. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, that's fair enough. And I, I <laughs> one thing just to mention is with a container. Um, I, I also just think I need to just mention this is that so all the software and all the dependencies for the software to work is bundled in a container. So if the container works on my PC, it should work on any PC with an x86 instruction set. It's it it exactly tries to solve the problem of people having different library versions installed and all this sort of stuff because all of that sort of stuff mm -hmm. is built into the container sort of thing. Uh -huh. um, so, um, so yeah, so, but apologies. Yeah, I just actually realized now that having a chat with Lionel that everything is set up for CUDA because that's the stuff that I, you know, is obviously part of my testing and my development and, and it's not something that everyone has got installed. So, yeah, apologies for that. But um, if you have no a, a modern PC, should it have a CUDA or not? If, uh, let's say, it I have a... It depends yeah. if you've got an NVIDIA, like an NVIDIA graphics card. And 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 it's it's you will need the graphics card, and then you will need other like the runtime and all sorts of other stuff installed. So I think if I just default it not to run on CUDA, it's just going to be easier for everyone. Oh yes, yes, that would be it's, great because I, yeah, so, I realize that I don't. I have a Iris card. Yeah, so that's an oversight on my part. I'm sorry about that. And oh, that's, that's probably fine. what's what's caused people some issue. Um, is it's it expects the CUDA runtime to be installed and which will not be installed if you don't have you know that's something you physically have to install yeah oh. and um so you will know if you've got the CUDA the um, NVIDIA Docker runtime um so yeah if you if you if that's not something you've installed then you won't be able to run the CUDA containers awesome Oh, that's great. Yeah, so sorry about that. Yeah, yeah no, that's cool. That's fine. That's Thank you. Side on my side, so no, that's, that's great. Hey, Mike, what would it take to port yeah. this for the Jetson boards? Um, mm. which Mike? <laughs> Mike, Mike, yeah. Mike. The other one is Michael. Sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. <No>. Um, <laughs> so, um. So I don't, I, I don't. So okay. So the difficulty we currently have with Jetson and Jetson Nano in particular is, is, and this is like my understanding of this stuff, right? Is that the version of ROS is very tightly coupled to the version of Ubuntu. Okay. Okay. So the version of ROS that I've used is called Humble Hawksbill or something like that, which is um, version 22.04 of Ubuntu. So the difficulty you have now is that so you, 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 you get something called um, a jetpack, which is the image that is supplied by NVIDIA which is what you install on the SD card. And that SD card you then put in your Nano and boot up, and, and that basically contains the version of Ubuntu that runs on the Nano. So the version of Jetpack that is supported by the Nano, I think is, like, is not the latest version. It's version 4.3 or 4.6 or something like that, which is Ubuntu 20.04 not mm -hmm. to 22.04 mm -hmm. and Nvidia have now dropped support for yeah so Nvidia have now dropped support for the nano so they not like the the latest version of jetpack which i think is 22.04 i think i'm not i'm speaking on a correction but no. um, the latest version of jetpack which for example is ubuntu 22.04 is that is not supported by the nano so that they no longer have support for the Nano. So that's the only platforms that they support now is, I think it's the, um, the Xavier and the Yorin, I think. Um, 
so th so this is the problem now is that the version of ROS that I've used is not is and and it doesn't it doesn't I don't think it means that we can't try and run it on the Jetson. All I'm just trying to say is that there is this support inconsistency thing going on at the moment, like version inconsistency. Um, I can try and get it running on the Jetson. I can give it a go, you know. Um, I, I don't have a problem with that. I don't know if it'll work or not. Um, but there is this is this is the only concern with with um, those those things those like Jets and Nanos now is that it seems like Nvidia is dropping support for them. You know. Um, yeah. So I don't and I so I. So Humble Hawksbill is tied to version 22.04 of Ubuntu, and it's the previous version or the or the previous two versions that's tied to the uh, 20.04 of Ubuntu. Yeah. So so I I don't know exactly the you know the size of the change between like the previous version of ROS and the current version of ROS, and if you can run if it's backwards compatible. In a in a way, so yeah. does that make sense? So I, d I don't think you can install Humble Hawk's Bull Ross onto a Jetson Nano because it's it's usually tied to the operating system and it runs a previous version yeah. of the operating system that Humble Hawk's Bull requires. Yeah. So so there's this idle, ver excuse me. version issue. Uh, Idol, no. do you have any idea of the changes in ROS2 Humble to the previous version? No, so I, I've been using Ram, uh, Humble. Uh, this is the latest version of ROS. Yes. Um, and uh, again, the, the big change that they changed the DDS um, from what they had before to the one that is eProsima and supports real time. Right? That's, that's the big change that Humble did, uh, brought. Ross and ROS2 already support real-time? Isn't it all about that? No, uh, uh, you, you could have done that, but no, it wouldn't be like kind of the default. It wasn't, wouldn't be built in as it, it is with ROS2. Like, like okay, what, yeah. what I say, you were saying Humble is a version of ROS2, right? Yes. Okay, and the yes, previous version... That was like proxy. And the previous version of Humble is still ROS2, right? Yeah, yeah, it's always ROS2. Uh, they they no, had no. like Foxy and then they had Humble. And, and they're going to have a new one in a couple of months, I okay, think. Okay, so the difference between Humble and Foxy, do you know that? Yes, that's the changes to ePosima DDS, yes. And some others, it's not the only thing, but and is that this, was the big one. Is this crucial to us? Yes. Damn. But but bear in mind, well, like, 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 I, I, like we can compile ROS2 on, on anything. So, so. You mean uh, ROS2 just like, on anything? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's in GitHub. You know, they, they have the, all the scripts to so build it. it it's easier with Ubuntu. <laughs> it's easier with Ubuntu because you have the package. Yes. Yeah. But in this case, it would mean that if we go with Ubuntu 20.04 and using Jetpack 1.4, I think. Um, what, what, maybe, why do you need to fix yourself to a, a, an operating system? Because then we had to skip the, the Jets and Nanos. Well, I think, um, well, well <laughs> I, 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 think, I think it's a very uh, immature discussion right now. Like first, let's make it work. Then we can figure out if we can uh, support like all the operating system or, or you know operating systems that are not supported, libraries that are not supported. Um, um, no, other, no. Otherwise, we we'll catch our tests. Like uh, 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 I will tell you, use the latest and greatest until you have it working, and then you can start uh, uh, changing everything around. But at the end, you end in a in a one way road that tells you you only have to go with let's say Jetson um, or in HX for example just I, 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 disagree. I, I, I disagree I can tell you um, uh, you know building SDKs for four years right um, uh, uh, eventually what drops 
is the old functions, you know, that the, the old the, the 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 hardware that are not supported anymore, not be, being sold anymore, you know, you don't need a, you're not you don't need these functions. So, so those are being removed, or you add new functions that support only the new hardware, and that, that's what everyone is migrating to anyway, right? But you don't have this problem with ROS2 because it's uh, like everything is abstracted away from you, right? Uh, 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 th there is no like a, 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 a um, OS specific things that we need, right? We are just making it easier right now because ROS2 is, is easy to install with Ubuntu, right? The, 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 the SDK, again, the, the, the SDK on v NVIDIA, most likely the, the new functions some hardware specific stuff that don't exist on the nano the chances of that i would say like low that we will need that specific function that doesn't support in the nano okay i think yeah so i i, I agree with ido i think one thing we can do and one thing we can certainly try because if if we containerize what we are doing all we need to do is get an operating system running on the nano so if we if we yeah. if we don't say we don't rely on Jetpack, we just basically install Ubuntu on the Nano and then run the container, and we see if that if that works. The only thing I think that Jetpack will bring is it'll bring the NVIDIA container runtime um, and probably a bunch of other stuff to yeah, uh, so that, so interact that's with some of the hardware that is specific to the nano Jetsy. or, yes, or the jet uh, device it, it will it will bring two things it will bring uh, uh, the the nvidia uh, drivers right the, and uh, and the, the cuda the cuda sdk that includes all the developer tools and all of that right yes agreed um, uh, um, yeah and, so, and we need that because that's like a kernel mode a kernel mode stuff so that's something that docker cannot provide you Yes, agreed. So that's that's something that we would need to. So we would need to install the OS, and yeah, then we would need to provide, we need to prov yeah we need to provide instructions on how to install the OS as well as these NVIDIA um, container runtimes and stuff um, that our containers can then use. So so that that's the only thing we would have to do if we didn't use Jetpack, Richard. I, I guess is the point I'm trying to make, is that. If like if, if if the latest jetpack is is does you know if does not support the nano, then we would just need to be able to install the latest version of Ubuntu with the NVIDIA container runtime and everything that we need to get our ROS system running. Um, that's all we'll it's just more work. That that that's that's all. That's all. So yeah. you say well, that's kind of the point I was coming around to. So, Mike, you say uh, Jetpack is actually not needed, but I thought Jetpack is the the enabler of CUDA. This yeah, so Je I think so. I'm speaking under correction, right? Because I've never tried to basically install Ubuntu directly onto an SD card for a Nano, but I, I think what Jetpack is, it's a bun it's it's the operating system which is Ubuntu, and then it'll be a bunch of nvidia specific libraries maybe and mm -hmm. systems or um platforms that you can then use to interact with kudu with I, I think i think it's just stuff that you can install on top of the os yeah yes. um, it's not the and, os it's a it's a pack of libraries yeah and, and i think you know, the, I guess the biggest concern here yeah, is if NVIDIA in their libraries no longer support the Nano. Like, if you can't get the latest version of their libraries to run on the Nano because it's not supported. Yeah. That, 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 I think, is probably the biggest concern, you, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I think, I think we just got to try it. And see if we can get it working. Um, that's all we can do, you know. Yeah, yeah, of course. I, I mean, I do get the point to to, to yeah. stay as as hardware independent as possible, because it does not limit you in the future. Absolutely. 
but sometimes we have to start building things to test them out and they have to be integrated with all of you and, and all of you are now working on your particular setup for your particular needs and yeah we have to find a point in time where this floats together on one platform yeah agreed no multiples. agreed yeah 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 the question is just agreed. when agreed. when do we start this process yeah that's a fair point well, if I, I mean, if I might, yeah. yeah go ahead mike i was gonna say if i might uh yeah. yeah particularly mike if you just kind of keep me um you know post on what version numbers of things you're doing because basically one of the things I'm doing is I'm doing the implementations here to see what I'm, what I'm going to be up against when I try to write it up so I can say, oh, here's, here's the install package. So if you just, you know, basically a version number is probably enough. And I can, I, I can take it from there for doing some builds here. And, um, you know, I, I, I've also, uh, in, in sitting here, I'm going, well, I can do some, some sample and trial builds and see what, what I get. So, um, and I can do that for the for the Nano. I don't happen to have a Raspberry Pi just yet, so I can't really look at that side of it yet, just yet. But um, anyway, so if you just let me know what version numbers of what software, I think that would be a great help. Uh, yeah, that stuff's usually all defined in, in the container, the Docker file. So the thing that builds the mm -hmm. container has got, like, it will, it will, in there, it will define all the dependencies that you, that you need to compile the like open cv and you know all those sorts of things so so um and, and i don't think we've explained i think we just take whatever the latest version is i don't think there's a restriction on versions so we just pick whatever the latest version is at the time you know of yeah. but but um but i think for for the nano what we would need to try what we would need to try and do is we would need to try and create create an an image like an operating system image that is quite similar to what jetpack is currently so that mm -hmm. means you know um and i don't know what what versions of what is installed in jetpack i i i, I, I just I, I don't know so that's no. something we'll have to yeah no but i just really do if you have a look on like the nvidia website you should be able to find yeah. the latest version of jetpack that supports the nano and then see what what versions of stuff's installed there but it, you know there's stuff like i know like for example open cv comes in jetpack and like python will mm -hmm. be part of jetpack and um the yeah. nvidia container runtime will be part of jetpack because all that stuff yeah. just works so it's just those they just there will be just a couple of things that we would just manually have to install mm -hmm. And we won't need all uh, well, just a side comment when I yeah when I downloaded the uh, jetpack I actually had to do the build for OpenCV and I was actually kind of disappointed on the performance uh, I ran it on the nano and I was actually kind of disappointed because to do the build for OpenCV it actually took somewhere around six or seven hours yeah it takes like, a while. Well, you know I'm, I'm spoiled with high speed goodies yeah, yeah anyway no, but these, um, things, these things take yeah, a while been faster right. than that no, they yeah. Even on a full blown PC, it takes a couple of hours. That's why it's all built into the container, so you don't have to do any of that no. sort of stuff. That's why I'm, no. you know, because you'll have to build. Yeah, so there's several things that you'd have to build. You'd have to also build the BGS library and then the Sky 360 library and you know all these sorts of things. So, yeah, I, what I try to do is take all of that, uh, you know, take all of that hassle away from you guys by. Providing a container that contains all that sort of stuff, you, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah, no, it takes a while, mate. I know I've been there. <laughs> yeah, look, yeah, look okay. I was, I was most kind of surprised by that. It's most likely that the jet, Jetpack also provides stuff that we don't really need. So it's probably better once we move forward yeah. to create our own package and our own. <clears> package. <throat> yeah. That, that is more geared to what we need and not like extra packages that no one uses. That's a fair point. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I, I I can tell you I I worked with uh, uh, um, Nick earlier this week, and I I, um, I uh, it was actually very straightforward to build, um, and I, and I shared on the on the screen. Uh, uh, so I'm building the uh, right now. I'm just building the Nix packages for the Indie camera, for the Indie Lib. Sorry. 
uh, um, and I'm, I'm able to build it in my machine, which is a x86-64, and I'm able to build on it also for the ARM. So that's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing, I'm doing it using a, a, an emulator, a QEMU, but Nix uh, uh, support it like natively, so I, I don't even see it. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, being like uh, uh, configured or anything like that, it's seamless. So you're, you're talking about Nix, Nix OS, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It's an OS. It's a yeah. full-fledged OS, right? It's Nix. Nix. Okay. Uh, Nix is a programming language. It's a functional programming language. It's also a package manager. And Nix OS is the operating system that uses the Nix uh, package manager. All right. But, but, but it's more. But it's more than just a package manager. It's a, it's an entire system configurator. So. You, you 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 can deploy with with it. Um, um, once you configure your um, let, let's say um, your Nix files, you can deploy your system configuration to servers, to your laptops, to your desktop, to mm -hmm. your Pi, to JSON, whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and you can store it in Git. Git. Uh, 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 so it's it's powerful. Okay, perfect. So, but th this this setup, this Nix OS, is just for you as a developer, it has nothing to do with the system, so to bring it over instead of Ubuntu, for example. Um, yeah, yeah, I think in the future, probably we will move to Nix OS. Uh, uh, I, I, I told you, my, my entire setup is with Nix. Like, I, I don't have anything else at, at my home right now. So I'm learning it the hard way. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm forcing myself. Uh, we were discussing we were discussing it for some weeks now um, and um, we thought that it might be a good idea um, to have all the disk images that we are preparing um, done with uh, um, let's say Nix or Nix OS because um, we, we said I think half a year ago it would be best that no one can mess around with the disk images mm -hmm. and uh, a good way to do that and make it even harder is um, you, you have a very stiff learning curve uh, for Nix because it's uh, a little bit different in the concept. And uh, you have to forget uh, some of the things that you know about uh, package managers, um, like, let's say, apt or let's say uh, pacman on, on uh, arch or any other uh, le uh, just on on uh, uh, mm -hmm. other systems um they are a little bit different but they it, it is very easy to produce uh, packages and package lists mm -hmm. and to include everything and install it in a very nice way uh, uh, set up as you know uh, from our uh, prefer meeting uh, before meeting um, a setup uh, two uh, laptops uh, for having both uh, the printing capability and uh, testing the camera and uh, stuff and I set it up with Nix and with it Nix is OS. so yes it's so nice to have just one setup and you can port it uh, to an, uh, to a different uh, uh, laptop or computer by just saying okay you want to install the same thing and it's nearly like cloning something mm -hmm. so, and so this is the beauty comment? in it yeah so the only comment i'll make here right is i think you you this so my concern is that there's constantly going to be something better around the corner that we have to move to. And we get to a point where we're just constantly chasing our tail because yeah. it can be done better doing that and, and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, that, that – because, say, if you if you guys mandate Nix OS now, then you also no, have no, to No, 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 we, 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 we don't do that. <laughs> For you, it's no. Docker. Yeah, we, yeah we, no, it's it's well. only for we we use that as an opportunity, and, and not only Nix OS. Maybe we do not uh, go the uh, the route down to Nix OS, but use Nix as a package management system uh, for all the work that is done in the background that nobody else uh, is going okay. to access. Okay. Because yeah. it it prevents okay. the yeah. others from accessing anymore. Uh, okay. 
much more. Yeah. So yeah. this is this is not to bother f uh, for every uh, one else than for the package maintainers, for okay. for the one that are producing the disk images. Yeah, because I, I mean, we, we we have already like with um, Rebecca has already kind of mentioned also snap images and all sorts of stuff. So so I think. Um, you know, I think we're just in danger of, of, um, like, yeah, I, I just, yeah, I, Too many like in danger, yeah, I was just like constantly trying to find somebody else to do, do, do the job. And I'm, and I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I'm just saying that, you know, I think, um, like, um, like we just have to like settle on a platform so that everyone can, I think there's going to be a learning curve just because most people probably use Windows, you know. So, so just for people that use Windows to move to Linux is going to be or to Ubuntu is going to be a big learning curve, and then to move from Ubuntu to you know Nix again, and you know that that sort no, of no, thing you is, do just, not is the only concern. You, you do not have to do that. That that is okay. the beauty of it. You do not have to move somewhere. Um, okay. what, what we are doing uh, with, uh, or, or what we are looking at Nix is, that is for us as the disk image maintainers, a very, very easy way to have all those different versions of something melted into one disk image. This is the beauty. It, it, it makes it very easy for us to maintain all these different parts and, and give out and, and produce the disk image that you just flash on an, an SD card or flash on a USB drive and uh, use it so from there. May, may, I say, may I add to this that could, could that be a possibility so that every developer works in his environment, her environment, with his tools, his versions, or what have you. Now, versions is a different topic. But with his environment, let's say operating system, hardware, architecture, blah, blah. And then when a certain milestone is done and, and on the repo, um, that you can take this version and port it to, or compile it to whatever architecture and NixOS. Uh, no, not NixOS. Uh, Nix is uh, a package maintaining okay. system. So, Nix is, so but, the Nix OS is only for you two developers needing the Nix software. And, um, and it I, has nothing to do with the system and developers. Uh, Ido uh, showed me uh, Nix, uh, the, the actual Nix, ver uh, Nix OS version, and uh, I tried it out, I think, I think uh, five years ago, but there wasn't much on it. And now the, they have plenty of uh, interesting stuff, and Nix, is, is, Nix OS is working very, very fine. But um, you need a learning curve to, to master uh, the Nix package management. Yes. And um, what what we are uh, um, what we are going to um, to take is that we are going to use the Nix as a package management system. We do not have to use it on on every system. Mm -hmm. No, and we do not okay. have to bring people to to use Nix OS. But you can use Nix um, separated from Nix OS on any system. And this is. This is really a beauty, when you say Nix, no, you nobody need... else. Only Ido and me, and maybe someone who is joining our team, um, um, will use it. Okay, but finally, anybody else won't use it. Okay, finally, whatever the developers contribute and deliver, let's say to you, you inter you you convert it into whatever architecture is needed, and yes. you create an image that someone can download on an SD card and put it in and power it up. Yes, and yes. do not have to do any of uh, the work that we already did for him or yes. her. Perfect. That means that every developer can work in his environment, her environment, as as is, and stay there. Yeah, that was the plan. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And how do you come about issues like um, is NixOS CUDA? Oh, no, sorry, Nix. I'm not talking about it. Would that so, image? So I, 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 I can I can show you. So I can show you I can, can I, I, how I can shell uh, from Nix into like a CUDA environment, CUDA development environment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. 
it's it's very easy. Just install the the, the, the CUDA package manager. I'll, I'll show you. Give me one second. Yeah, just just uh, the the only thing I'd say is, what's easy for you might not be for other people. Um, as yeah, but you might it's, not um, have to do it. Mike. Oh my god, <laughs> yeah. Mike, I'm I'm going to help you with your fear based system. With my fear based, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm going to help you be be comfortable being uncomfortable. <laughs> it's it's not that it's not that, mate. It's just I'm 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 the one that's been trying to get people to use. I'm I'm the, I'm the one that's been trying to get people to use Docker over the last like month, and I know how difficult that's been, and the challenges involved in that. So I'm just being, I'm just the, the I'm just you know also just talking from experience, and that's no, just I, I, I got you. you know? I got you. <laughs> so yeah, but, Michael, when you talk about Docker, that the idea is behind this Docker that you're talking about. So that other developers like Rebecca can take the Docker and run your tracker with it, but it does yeah, not so mean that the Docker is then needed in the end on the image, right? So, I I don't know. It it depends. It it depends how it's configured and how we set it up and all this sort of stuff. And I mean, you have to bear in mind that all these things takes time and mm -hmm. effort, and someone has to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what I mean. So yeah. So. The, the the purpose behind Docker and is what was or the idea behind it is that and so Docker is available even for like a development environment as well. So you you have to bear in mind in order to run the ROS version of Simple Tracker now, you have to have OpenCV okay installed and working. You then have to have the BGS library installed, and not only okay that you have to compile. So you, in order to compile that, you need all the all the tools to be able to compile it. Okay, and then there's the stuff that Fabio is working on, so that will need to be compiled as well. And then you need to have you then need to install ROS and make sure that's working. Okay. And and only then, you know, once that entire tool chain is installed, configured, and working, only then can you try and run Simple Tracker and hope it works. Mm -hmm. And that will be the ultimate test to ensure that your entire tool chain is working. Mm -hmm. And if your entire tool chain is not working, then s someone's going to go, oh, such, I've, I get such and such an error. Right, and 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 someone else is going to have to go. Okay, well now we've got to try and figure out what that error is and how is it installed and what's configured and blah 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 blah. Whereas with a container, all that stuff is self-contained in the container. So the end user doesn't have to compile or install any of that sort of stuff. They just run a simple script, and in theory, it should work. <laughs> That's not proven successful yet. <laughs> But the goal is to, you know, to be in that position where you you run like the setup.bash file, setup.sh file, and up pops the ROS2 version of Simple Tracker. You yeah. know, and it's got all that stuff that's all that stuff's been compiled, installed, you know, for you. You don't have to worry about yeah, any of, of that. That of that all just works. You know, you know what I mean? And if it works for one person, it should work for everyone because it's an immutable image. So no one can change the image. So people, you know, and all this sort of stuff. So that's the kind of theory behind it. Um, yeah. So. So, but like, and, um, like what people get to know of um, that strange word, app image, and it is basically the same concept. And with with Nix, we're going to take it just uh, one step further. So you just put the SD card in, and everything else is running. And if uh, we need uh, some updates, we provide a new disk image. You put it, you, you flash it on your SD card, you put it in a Pi, uh, a Nano or whatever, and you run it from there and you do not have to change things. It, it does basically uh, the things Mike just uh, pointed out, but uh, with, uh, with 
a way that we can uniform everything uh, behind the scenes so it can run on any different hardware. And uh, yes, it, it's just um, with Nix, we are taking uh, the effort of Mike just one step further. So that also means that if, if Mike and let's say, for example, Rebecca are working with the same Docker image and having all the same libraries and yeah, then when they upload a certain milestone, you take this milestone. My question is now, when you take this milestone, you, it is wrapped in a Docker image. Or do you say, uh, forget about Docker, you take out the code and you have to recompile it anyways? Um, no, we, we can use uh, uh, the, th this Docker image uh, and uh, make it work uh, on uh, with Nix on uh, any other ah, system okay. that we want to provide. Uh, okay. So in that case, the Docker image of Mike and Rebecca doesn't does make sense for any developer to use the same one. Because then it makes the life easy for you just to take it and, and put it into Nix software to create the image. Yes. The, the idea that we had in, I think it was February, uh, was that we uh, at some point uh, can have exactly that, that uh, um, we, we have a unified system and the maintenance of the system is very easy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I don't like the idea that if someone wor is working on something, that this work is lost only because he's working on a different system. Mm -hmm. And if we can provide uh, the working thing and uh, the result and do not have to change uh, things in a whole because someone is using a different system, then we are there where we want to be. And this is why we are looking in the background um, for a way that nobody has to dive into as administrative tools uh, to, to get the same system running. So if we can, can do this work uh, for all the others, then we have to do that. And therefore we, we, um, were, we were, Ida and me, were discussing those things um, to to reduce the workload uh, on the maintenance part. So yes, but yeah. in the case of, let's say, let's say two types of architecture, the x86 and the RM, for example, just take the two. Um, yeah. It is on Mike's side to compile a Docker Im Is it right to say this? To compile a Docker image for this particular architecture? Yes, for each one, yeah. Okay, so, it is still the developer who is doing, let's say, two two paths: the x86 and the the RM path. Just an example. Um, may, maybe you... we will we maybe we will reach some point where just one version has to be produced, and uh, the package maintainers uh, will do the compiling for uh, everyone ah, else. Okay. But okay. we are not there yet. We yes. we are just discussing strategies here, okay. and uh, we are testing some things out and. Uh, yeah. This is done in parallel to uh, to every other development for, uh, work. So, yeah. But since we do not have uh, the working uh, alpha model, uh, I don't think it, it's necessary to talk priorities here. Mm -hmm. I think uh, let's focus on on having the, the first alpha version mm -hmm. uh, working not published, but working. Uh, and then we can decide uh, which route to go. Mm -hmm. But having it in, in the back of our minds is a good thing to have because then we won't uh, um, say, okay, hmm, what will the future bring? I think it's, it's best to, to have thought about it and uh, tried something out. And uh, this, this, helps, uh, this helps the development process a lot. Okay, Mike, in this case, um, stick with the Docker, right? It, I think Ly Lionel, did you get it working? I'm um, I'm running the setup at the moment. Okay. And okay. It seems It'll take to a be, while uh, but what I'm not clear about is, okay, the setup finished. Oh, can I just share my screen? It should it it should just it should start the application. 
Okay, it, launch, it seems to start the application. Yeah. And you should yeah, yeah, hopefully get a screen that pops up. And the screen. Okay, here we are. So that's the output of setup. Well, it's just taking me a little while to loading. Um, I think, uh, I don't know. Is that running or is that not you running? You can see a video with... with well, no, I cannot see a video. I don't have a... Okay. That's, that's what I had when I run build. And now I, I run so you can, you can It seems so to be the run, same output. Yeah, I just... Um, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to... I, I can't see your, your screen. Can't see my screen? No. 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 Uh, uh, patching you back. Okay, I'm trying again. Screen. Entire screen. Loading. Okay, do you see your uh, VS code? Still loading? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see? Okay. Okay. So I I opened a new container, uh, a yeah, new yeah, yeah. Uh, shell in the container. Okay, so... okay. okay. And then so, I, I issued, uh, I switched uh, to the workspace directory and issued uh, setup.ch. Uh, I did that. Setup. Yeah, if you run that. CH, okay, run. It's, uh, it's taking a while. And yeah. That loop of uh, of camera three. See that? That's that's where it seems stuck. Oh, is it? Okay, okay. Uh, I think I know. I might know what the problem is. Okay, so in in VS Code, can you just mm -hmm. Control C? Okay. And then, if you go into on the left, if you expand the so, if you expand the SRC folder. SRC folder. Yeah. Okay. In the set in the middle. Uh, there we oh, go. Yeah. And then if you expand the simple tracker launch folder, tracker that's the one. Launch. If you expand the config folder, okay. and if you click on the params.yaml. This one? Yeah, that's the one. So now, okay. Uh, now it's set to video. So it's set to video, it's set to loof, set to Brad drone. Address. Yeah, no, that that's um, yeah. So it's, it's not actually looking for a camera because the controller is set to video. Um, so if you just if you in the in your terminal, mm -hmm. if you just run build.sh. Probably take a little while to run because it's just yes, but that that seemed to because I tried that before that build.sh and it seemed yeah, to no, go no. through, but then yeah, that, that's fine, yeah, okay. It was a uh, was the same uh, the same output as with a uh, setup, but yeah, so that, they kind of do the same thing at the end. I need to fix those files, they're not they're not quite there's some maintenance work that I need to do there now that I know someone else is using it, but, um, <laughs> to, but, but, um, yeah, I just, let's just see you quickly if, um, cause it is, so once you hit control C, you get a whole bunch of error, error, like the, the nodes kind of, yeah, nodes coming offline. Yeah. So 
if we just um I wouldn't mind just um so I, I've never I haven't tested it on a Mac, okay. So there could there could for sure be something not right. Yeah. Well I have a I have a PC uh from work and I, I tried the container build on the PC, but the the PC is uh, it's rather on the the low end of PCs, and it, uh, it could not build the container. I'm I'm gonna try again now that you changed uh, a few things. I'm gonna try again on the on the PC. Okay. But that's that Mac is the only one that could build the container as of uh, yeah, no, 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 yesterday yesterday's version. So those things all come so they. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, so they're compiling at least. So that's a start. Okay, so okay. all packages so, compiled. So now yeah. it now it should. It now should. So, okay. Okay. So those are nodes starting up. Um, and there's the configuration node, and there's some other nodes. Okay. Configuration service not available. That's that's mostly what I, I can see. Yeah, so they're all are they all spinning waiting for the config. If you, if you, the if you, if you mouse like scroll a... down, can you? Yeah, so they. Is it all the same thing? So they're all waiting for the config. Yeah, service. it's all it's all the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, so basically the config service is is central to the whole thing. It's almost like the registry. So it, mm -hmm. it holds all the configs for everything. Okay. So what so all or what all the nodes do is they try and contact the configuration service yeah. to um to 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 get their configuration and mm -hmm. if you just control C quickly Cool. And then okay. if you just can you just scroll all like pretty much all the way to the top. Um, um, just before the setup. Yeah, essentially just just off like mm -hmm. you we saw those nodes being built. I don't even know if your oh, buff yes, is big enough. Uh, but... No, it's not big enough. It's not. Okay. I can I can. Uh, well, the I can um, do the command again. Yeah, can you do a can you do a can you type clear just to um... yeah just to okay and then, and then just do, build, do a build. again yeah 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 and I'm going to uh, control C sooner this time yeah as soon as you start seeing that it gets into that loop of um, mm -hmm. trying to contact the config service you control C so it's going to be uh, two it's minutes. it's a bugger now because I'm away for two weeks now. Oh, where are you going to? Uh, Madeira. Oh, I don't. <laughs> yeah, so, so I'm I'm at the air, I'm kind of at, at the hotel in the airport at the moment. <laughs> um, You're waiting for the next plane? Uh, no, it's the flight's only tomorrow, but um, it's quite early, so it just. Uh, so it's, you're sleeping in. Yeah, yeah. We we well even like we ten minutes walk from the airport, and even so, uh, we have to wake up at four a.m. Hmm. So um, yeah, if I if I were to drive you, I'd have to wake up at like two a.m. <laughs> so it doesn't make much sense. So you make it just through the night. Yeah, yeah, so it just means it's a very long day then, oh. and I I'll get terribly grumpy when I'm tired. <laughs> so, wow, so. you have two weeks to recover. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's I thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll just see. Yeah, uh, because I I have been messing about with quality of service um, profile so so we can I can we can if this doesn't you know if if we if we there, there's some there's something else that I, I can suggest um, is this being recorded by the way yes okay oh my hair right just don't say it. Just don't it say is. it. <laughs> I'll paint your hat. <laughs> yeah. So if this, yeah. So I, I, I can, I can make changes, and then I'll just ask you to maybe clone again. Oh yeah, sure. Um, 
Okay, so that's finished. So. Okay, that's log files. Passwords, configuration, service, info. Okay, just control C. Okay. Okay, if you scroll up. Okay, scroll a little bit down. There's the configuration service thing. So what does it say? Configuration service is up and running. So the config service, yeah, so. The configuration get service, okay. I think there's a QoS conflict here. So can you um, do me a favor quickly? Can you expand um, the sample tracker shared folder on the left? It's at the bottom, yeah. So it's it's quite okay. It's in the middle there now. The shared one, and then that one as well, please. And then can you click the QoSprofiles.py file? Okay, and so over here, what we want to do is um, we kind of want to return the default, the system default. And if you scroll, um, if you scroll up a little bit, I just want to try and find the command that, and um, if you just slowly scroll up um, for me, please. Uh, um. Uh, you mean down? Oh, oh, down, sorry, down. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, okay, stop. Stop. So, stop quickly. So, can you see line 39? Yep. So, return system present profile dot system default dot val. So, what you want to do is you want to return that out of all of these functions. So, if you comment out. Okay. So you, you can see where it builds a profile, where it goes QoS profile equals QoS profile depth equals 10 and all that. Yeah. So if you if you just comment all that bit out and you, you return that out of every single one okay. of these methods that return a profile. Okay. And then just try again. So can I do, uh, can I do it like this? I would... Yeah, so, yeah, that's yeah, fine. yeah, 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 that's fine. If you just do that with all of them. Okay, I'm doing that. I think there are about four or six of them or something like that. So, okay. So now that, if you save that, you just control that S. That. Not the, no, that one's fine because that one's already the default, fine. I think. Yeah. So if okay. you. So I save control, that. Yeah, control and, uh, S and then just, just run again. the build. Yeah, just run the build.sh command again. So all, all we are telling it to do now is just use the default, the system default, QoS profile for all nodes versus trying to run some nodes that are that are re requiring reliable oh. transmission and others which are requiring volatile and all that sort of stuff. We're just going, we're just wanting the default, the system default across everything. Okay. I'm sounding like I'm knowing what I'm talking about. I'm not. I just I only real I only learned this stuff like two weeks ago. So. <laughs> hey Mike, um, just if we have some seconds, um, any update from from Fabio um, and and background subtraction front? No. Not yet. No, I'm. I'm. I'm kind of. I, I'm. I, I have. There are commits going into the repo. Mm -hmm. um, I assume he's just dealing with family stuff. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. um, so, I think. 
I think once I think once he's in a position where I think once he's in a position where we can integrate it into you know the containers and stuff, then I think he'll probably be be back in touch, sort mm-hmm. of thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Okay. So I, I just I just thought I'd leave him for the moment because yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. The the other thing I'm looking at is I'm trying to I'm like trying to understand more the the existing ROS2 packages and what's currently available. And I'm I'm trying to, I'm going to try and build like a little image processing pipeline with stuff that's currently available Mm -hmm. and see if I can get it up and working. Like, you know, some of the more machine learning type sort of, Mm -hmm. um, you posted, packages, uh, really. you posted yesterday, yesterday, I think, in, in Discord about uh, yeah. image, or you, two days before, image processing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, ROS2 image processing. So, here we yeah, go. Yes, a line, or I don't know what, why, there's something not... Is that still the configuration service? Yeah, it's still, it can't Which find the config agree. service. Can you, can you do us a favor, mate? Can you, like... Sure. Can you see on in the right hand side there where you've got dev containers and you've got the bash right. terminal yeah. Yeah. on the right on the right hand side? So ne- yeah, if you if you add another t- another bash terminal, and then over here you just once this is up and running, if you can type ros space topic r- ros two sorry ros two space topic space list. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Can you type ROS to space? Is it service maybe? Service mm-hmm. space Sorry. list. Yes, list. Yeah, uh, there's mm-hmm. something weird going on here. I don't know. I don't know what's going. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know what's. Um... I don't know. I don't know. Um... I don't know why. Why it's not working? I don't know why it can't connect to the. There's something. Something's obviously stopping it from connecting. You know, there's something not quite right, and I don't. I don't. I don't know what that is off the top of my head. Sorry, mate. I, I don't know. Um, um, how about a breakpoint? Will it get it? Uh, you, 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 you would then have to probably run it within VS Code um, versus from ah, the yes. terminal. Okay, um, but um, um, a stupid, a stupid question. Um, in line eighteen, it's uh, in line line nineteen. It says QoS preset profiles, but all other profiles have different name. It's just QS profile, not preset it, profile. Yeah, so that so so there are a couple of system defaults uh-huh. like that have been pre-configured for you, uh-huh. and um, so all all we are saying here is is um, so so the fir- line sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen isn't really needed because um, we we're not actually creating our own profile. All we are saying is just return the default profile, the default QoS profile that. You know, from 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 the system. Yeah. Um, so and you in, map in it theory, to QoS profile, but then you return a preset profile, anyways. Okay. Yeah. So so because it's not returning the QoS underscore profile, that's just that mm-hmm. will just go out of scope and wow. and okay. it'll be gar- gar- garbage collected. I would have thought, but um, you know, so the main thing we're interested in is returning the the default system profile. But I don't, I don't know, I don't know why it's not working can you go back yeah. to the first bash um the first terminal yeah. and just um you, you should you should see quite a list of stuff you know what i mean you should see 
you should see the services. You should see at least the configuration service. Um, so all, like basically, essentially, this is what's happening now is all, all the nodes are trying to contact the configuration service mm -hmm. to get their configuration, um, and they aren't able to reach it. And I don't know... Yeah, I, d I don't know if you need to do... Yeah, I, 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 I've, I've not tried it on a Mac, so I just don't. I just don't know if there's something that you need to do. You know, right. at like Mac right. OS level to, mm. to kind of ensure that. I don't know, mate. Sorry, so, I, I don't know what's wrong. Mike, no. the, in line 19, when you return this profile value, is there a value? Can we just log it? Whether there is a value or is it just empty? Huh. Um. You you can print it. You can print it to the terminal, but you you you'll have to pass the node in um, as as part of the method because if you just try and print directly from the method, it doesn't make it through to the terminal because ROS has got its own. Um, it, it kind of overwrites the way you print stuff to the terminal, so so you can't use default like print functions um, to to get information mm -hmm. from a ROS application out, you have to kind of, um, you have to pass the, the, the logger in. Um, and, and yeah, I'm sorry, I've just not, I've obviously just not run into, I've not, I've, I've not, I've just not seen this before. So and, um, um, what if I, uh, what if I uh, look into um, how to attach the debugger to the, to the terminal? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you should see, I don't know why you're not seeing anything as part of the, you know, when you list the topics and you list the service, I genuinely don't know why you aren't seeing um, anything in the list. Um, what about the Sentinel? Can I maybe uh, get the, can that we try and get anything. the Sentinel working on my yeah, machine? No, that, that, that currently doesn't do anything. What? It's literally just a bit of a scratch pad for me to try and get um oh, okay uh, yeah on it's pointless it really doesn't do anything at the moment at all so it doesn't um, query the configuration service no it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't do it literally so the 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 approach with that is going to be we don't have a centralized configuration service everything gets passed in via parameters okay. at node level and it's a lot more like a standardized so when i wrote this I wrote this with like application, like the, the way I would write an, uh, a, my sort of application. Um, the way I'm doing the Sentinel thing now is more along the lines of how you would write a ROS2 application. They, they are quite different with the way you get configuration passed in and those sorts of things. Um, so you pass all that stuff in via um, the launch file versus nodes querying a configuration service. I don't know which one's better because I quite like the way there's a centralized configuration service here um, because it, it, there are certain things that you can do without having to restart nodes and stuff. But the problem is, is exactly the sort of thing you're experiencing now is if that it's such an important service that if it's not running, nothing else works. Um, yeah. because it can't get to, you know, the nodes can't get to their configuration. Um, and maybe it's, uh, maybe it's lower level stuff. Maybe it's, because uh, um, the, the Sentinel, if it, can you tell if it runs, uh, if I, uh, if I do the setup command on this machine, can you tell if it runs from the terminal or not even the, the sentinel maybe the maybe sentinel. it's just the ros2 installation that's uh, that's not compatible with my machine for some reason yeah so that so yeah so this is i'm not so because it's it's because it's contained in a docker container mm -hmm. I, ca I kind of you know you you got this far so i i would have thought it's working the only thing i can think of that you're having a problem is maybe like um UDP for Docker is not enabled on a Mac, or or something like that. You know, you know oh. what I mean. Maybe, yeah. may, maybe, maybe that sort of thing is disabled by default 
Um, so UDP just doesn't work on a on a Mac because you know, and that would that would definitely be the case. You know, the fact that when you do ROS2 on Mac, topic list inside the container on a Mac, and you aren't oh. seeing anything. Yes, actually, uh, in the build terminal. Uh, yes, uh, I should have mentioned that. <laughs> Sorry. So when I build the container, it says, okay, port forwarding, port forwarding, and then I have a remote close, code zero, signal null. Yeah, so so I think there might be some stuff specific to Mac OS that you might might just need to look into, really, with regards to UDP. No, I just um, I just used my uh, my PC, but I I got yeah. To get sorry, mate. I don't container uh, working on the PC. Yeah, sorry about that. I'll go I get don't. it now. Okay. I'll go get my PC. Well, that's something to note. Is that uh, yeah, which I didn't realize. <laughs> that uh, yeah, that that's locked down a little bit. Is that um, yeah, it looks like UDP doesn't work inside. Docker mm-hmm. on Mac. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess you have to explicitly enable it, but I don't know how to do that, unfortunately. Um, well, I've noticed that Mac can get kind of strange on, uh, you know, talking to, uh, how do I put it, a- anything that it doesn't consider within the Mac ecosystem. And so it can be interesting, you know. But, uh, yeah, they, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like in order for UDP to work with Docker, you need to build a proper network between all the Docker images. Do, do you have a single Docker image or do you have multiple? Uh, it's all just in a single image. Yeah, so it, that should work. In, inside it should work, no problem. So it's something yeah. else. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought as well, but I, I don't know if it is because um, cause as you saw there, you can't even list the the topics, which kind of can't even list the topics and you can't, you know, yeah. list the services or anything. So there's something. What IP address you know, ranges are used there and 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 uh, services service ports in Docker that you use, or you only use localhost. Yeah, so it's I, there's nothing that I, that I've set up specifically personally. So um, um, I'm not too sure exactly which UDP ports. So, so I, I mean, it should it should work in all fairness, and I I would I would completely understand if you have something outside of the Docker not being able to talk to something inside the Docker image you know and and you would have to enable ports and port forwarding and all that sort of stuff to get that sort of stuff to work but because it's self-contained in the docker image you're not going outside of that container um it's all within that container so those things should be able to work the only thing i'm saying is unless basically apple has has con has said it so that that you know Docker for Mac, by default, doesn't have UDP enabled for some reason. I don't know. I mean, I'm just guessing now, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just a guess. But it's the only thing that seems plausible, yeah, because the fact that the nodes seem to be up and running, but they can't talk to each other. And also, you can't list the topics or the service, which means, you know, the ROS platform doesn't, you know, doesn't know it has got nodes and you know it doesn't know it's got topics and things running because it can't it can't reach them so I, I think there's an issue with i think there's a udp issue inside that container because Most it's running on a installed like a service in the container yeah so all the ROS stuff is installed in the container so you know all of that stuff is self-contained in the container is the container um, running at all yeah, it is because it's building. You can see the nodes are actually running. They're trying to contact. No, the, but the, but the build is the build happening inside the Docker container or outside? Yes, no, it's happening inside because you could see the username in the terminal. The user was called Ross, 
So yeah, yeah. that's that's the user that he's configured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's why I know it's definitely he's definitely executing those commands inside the container. Um, yeah. So that's definitely the case. But yeah, so it, it could be it could be permission issues and in in, in in OS X to bind to the network or something like that. Yeah, I. It's what it, okay. it feels like. There's something at that layer. It feels like there's some sort of restriction. Yeah, it's 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 not a it's not a container yeah. issue. It's a Docker issue on the machine, sort of yeah. thing. Sort of thing, you know. Yeah, um, got it. But but I don't I don't know how to fix it because I don't I don't have a Mac, so I don't know I don't know what to do and how and how to fix it. So I, I wouldn't know, and I don't have access. Yeah, I. Yeah. So I, I yeah. So I, I just don't know. I think Lionel will find out. He, yeah, I'm sure. He, I'm sure he will. Yeah. He will read some posts on the internet about ROS two on the Mac in Docker. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So let's let's create an issue on it on GitHub. Yeah. Please. Would you and, mind? And, okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll do that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, and then we can discuss it from there and, 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 and work on it together. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Um, just at a casual glance in the, in the Mac and its networking setup, it doesn't really, other than TCP IP, it doesn't really give you an option for like a UDP or any other choice. And so that might very well be an issue if, if um, you know, if the... Uh, nodes are relying on UDP to, to you know, for their connections. Just a, you know, side side note. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thanks. Lionel, are you on uh, GitHub? Uh, yeah, but I cannot come back into... Uh, I can't install uh, Discord on the company PC. But uh, I I know, but then I uh, I don't know, it doesn't work. Trying to. Um, Chrome, okay, I'll try this. Chrome. So um, get there. Okay, go ahead, Lionel. You want to see? No. Um, yeah, it's probably uh, it's probably the um, the output of the terminal, which I shouldn't have ignored. Uh, so I'm sure that well, uh, I think that the problem probably lies uh, in the lines uh, at the end of the container building. So it's it's probably it's gotta be that. Uh, I think that's got to be the issue that remote close. So I'm going to uh, look into that. So, so Mike, uh, do you agree that uh, it should not end that way? The yeah. So, so I, so I think. So this isn't. So, like, from my, from my, like, this is just an opinion, okay? But I don't think this is not a container issue. This is a Docker issue on Mac. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. maybe the Docker engine no. on Mac. Is more restricted than the Docker engine on, for example, like Linux yeah, or Windows, probably. in that it, it doesn't allow. It, it it might just not allow UDP. Is you know, there a just, uh, I, is I there, don't know how to change that. Though. Is there a configuration option for Docker that you can let's say enable UDP uh, on Mac? For me, I can look. Uh, I don't. Know much about uh, Docker? So. Yeah, well, at a fast glance, I did not find a UDP configuration on it. You know, in the network preferences, you know, setups. Uh, okay. um, mm. you click on, you click on Docker engine. So, if anything, it's gonna. I would have thought it. Be Can I try somewhere. that. So that yeah, no, I, 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 I genuinely don't know, man. I, I, I think it's something. Um, it's something I think you you might have to Google a bit and try yeah. and um, um, that's the joy of it. Yeah. So, 
that and it's and it's just a an, an assumption as well right it's just a it's just a thought i mean if you yeah can you scroll down I mean, this should be quite a common thing. So if, if you were to like Google something like ROS2 in a container on a Mac, not working or not no comms or something like that, you, I would have thought, I would have thought there'd be, this would, you know, I would have thought this would be, be a, yeah. you can't be the only person that's run into this, you know? Did you have, um, did you have that VS Code folder uh, that, that one folder and the that folder are, are they present in your container yeah, as well? Yeah, yeah, they are. See, your container is fine because if you look at the bottom left, you've got the dev container. You can see there's in the little green bit, you've got something that says dev container. So, 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 you know, this is running in yeah. in a dev container. And if you if you click on the terminal and you click on the first bash terminal, you yeah. will also see that the user you are logged in as is is um is called ross so and that's a user that's configured as part of the um ross. that's a user that's configured as part of when uh, when we build the container so um so so i definitely know you running from within the, you know you, you you've not done anything wrong here in my yeah. opinion yeah just um, a sec i am uh able to log in into Discord on the, the other PC, I need my phone back. So, um, a question I have uh, to Ido. Um, Ido, I had an idea because there are so many modules now for ROS nodes that I think it's a good idea to make a an overview of all ROS communications, so to, to on a module level, on a node level. Yes. Would you so agree are, that some, some things is, such, such thing is needed and good to have? But there's a um, there's an interface description in uh, in the repo of uh, of Mike. Uh, I've seen it somewhere that you yeah, uh, I've, you I've, write something there. about the message types. Yeah, yeah, yes. So I, I have I have. I think if you scroll further down, it, it might it might be further down. Um, so Endpoints. Do so there's, the... there's, if you click on endpoints, endpoints, um, yes. and then that kind of just says which endpoints are currently available. Yeah. I mean, so this sort of and this is what I'm figuring out now when when using other packages that I haven't authored. This is crucial to your development experience with ROS. So a very key part of developing on ROS is you need to be able to run a package and then see what the endpoints that are available that that package exposes, what um, message types are, are you know, the, the, the message type, which is essentially the contract for that endpoint. You know, all that sort of stuff is stuff that you need to be able to do um, and even, like, relay stuff from the topic and inspect the topic, understand the topic. You know, all that sort of stuff is is what you need to do as a developer to be able to integrate with other packages because, by and large, um, the documentation is not very good. <laughs> <laughs> with with a lot of these things that I've been messing about with, so um, yeah, it's 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 a key, it's a key like yeah. So that, that's one thing I've noticed is you, you you when you use other people's components or other people's packages, you become quite good at trying to understand what is being exposed <laughs> as part of as part of that package, the shape of the message. And all that sort of stuff before you actually subscribe to them, you know, to yeah. the endpoint. So, so it's all part of the fun. <laughs> it, it's it makes it quite hard work actually. But anyway, yeah. Yeah, it's fun, fun stuff. So there, there are 
two ways to discuss it around how, how we can do the communication around it. Uh, this is really like the, the uh, you know, the robot parts protocol, right? What they expose and what's the functionality that they provide. Um, uh, it, it will also help us understand, um, you know, what the requirements are for, it, for uh, um, you know, if we speak about more, um, uh, let's say, the old, uh, the, the old camera that I haven't started even thinking about, really. Um, uh, there is a lot there, like how to control. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, luckily, there, there is the indie, but even then, it's not really uh, documented. We have to look, go inside, look at it, figure it out, and, and expose it. Right. So I, I, I will be facing the similar problem. But I was thinking the approach that I, 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 wa I was about to take is actually when I start defining uh, 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 the data types, I will comment in the code what they are. Right, so I, I will have like the protocol documented like inside the code. Right, uh, yeah. uh, 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 this is something that actually comes from Rust that I, I like a lot. I don't know if I will use Rust, maybe Python to start or whatever. Again, get, gets us faster, but the idea is to start doing that, right? Uh, uh, and, and then we, uh, you know, we, we can find a way to, uh, to write some tool that extract all the documentation and generate something uh, more nice. Right. Agreed. Um, Agreed. Uh, uh, now, the, um, I I need to check. I need I need to ask a few people, uh, uh, you know, that that are more hands-on than me. But I'm pretty sure there is a tool that does that already. Yeah, uh, I think I, I think you can do. Yeah, I think I think it's at R R S Viz or something like that. There, there is something that you that you um there there is there there definitely is. Yeah. Yeah. You you, so you are right. So yeah. yeah, so if you want, I can take a look at it, come with some recommendation. Uh, or if you want to take a look, that, that's fine also. Uh, but yeah, no, I, 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 I thought that would be the approach. That would be uh, uh, easier because it's closer to the code and then it, we don't need to update the documentation all the time. We, we will generate it, right? At least for the protocol. Sorry, I, I didn't quite follow. That. So like, like, follow like we... we we need to get like the protocol specification, right? So you mean endpoints and message, like message types and those sorts of things? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yes, right. yes. And, and it, so, and, yeah, and, and, it, and it's easier when we get more developers coming and integrating. They need to understand it, right? So, so. Yeah, I mean, one, one thing I've noticed, one thing I've realized actually is that, like, I, I've defined all my own message types. Um, for for this application, and mm -hmm. that's not something that that I I would advise because you know it's better to use the current message types that already exist because then you can yes. quite easily integrate with other packages oh, yeah. that already yeah, yeah. exist because the message type is universal you know and all that sort of stuff so but that's just yeah. something you learn as you. As you work through it, you know. So, and that's one thing that I'm trying to correct now. When I, when I, when I, when I do this properly in Sentinel, is I'm going to just use like current system level message types that have, or not system level message, but message types that have already been defined by the community um, and agreed upon by the community because. Those message types then flow into packages which you don't necessarily author. You know, like there's the there are a couple of um, repos that I shared on the on the Ross two channel, and there's that stuff that is specific to Jetson and um, deep learning, and those things use message types that are not defined by Nvidia. They are defined by the Ross community, and if if I use message types that are defined by the Ross community, I can then feed into those nodes. Yes. Um, you know, and, and, and kind of, and vice versa, I can get stuff from those nodes because the, the message types are all defined at a much higher level. Um, so, so, yeah, so, so my suggestion is to, is to use, like, message types that are defined by the community as much as you can versus defining your yeah, own so, message so. types. Yeah, and, and you're, you're absolutely right, right? Uh, 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 with that said, we might start there, um, um, you know, for Alpha, but the plan for us, for, for Dollars Camera, is actually to implement the Indie protocol on, on yeah. ROS2. 
and because of like scientific like accuracy, the data types are not really supported in in ROS two. Right. Oh, okay. Uh, 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 no, no, not in the standard way of how it's being done there. Right. So that's something we need to change or create in ROS two for the community. So we'll see. Uh... So, Lionel, are you, this is a Windows machine, right? Are you are you running? Are you are you running this in WSL though, on the? Yeah. So you you need to. So do you have WSL two installed? So you you're gonna have to you're gonna have to run this from within WSL two, like the Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, yeah, if you go onto the Windows App Store, or whatever it's called, um, you, you should be able to find it. Um, you should be able to install it from there, really. Installed it uh, as part of the Docker installation. Is that something that's coupled with the uh, Docker? Yeah, it, 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 it does. Yeah. So, if you do, you have your Docker, your Docker for desktop. Do you have the thing you're running in the yeah. bottom? Yeah, I have the you, Docker for desktop. Um, if you click on, if you click on the settings. Um, it is, uh, so it, is, it does use WSL2 based engine. Okay. okay. So if you go into, if, so you're gonna, so if you go in at the command line. Okay. So, from, so, so from here, if you if you just go backspace, 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 and then type WSL. So is that is that running as? Well, the the container is not built, so that's a issue I had with the with this machine. So I'm gonna try it now that you've uh, updated the Docker file. I'm gonna try again. Yeah. So, so you... uh, I'm going to open Visual Studio, and uh, so this. So it should. Mm, okay. uh, so reopen in container. So that should be the yes. that should be the container. Yes. Let's do that. That's the thing. I um, had a feeling it got stuck. Uh, oh, that okay. uh, container building. So if you click on the log, oh, if you're ready. Yeah. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. So, um, may I come back shortly to, to, to what Ido just said? Um, what we need is an overview of all uh, topics and protocols configuration or data element configuration, right? Yeah, so, yes, yes. So, that, so that's what I've tried to provide in those, the endpoints.md file and the message types.md file. Uh -huh. um, so that should be there for, for that project. Okay. But yes, ag ag agreed. Um, Okay, so I find it on the on in GitHub. Um, message type. Yes. So if you, yeah, message types. Message types dot the md and the other one was. Uh, endpoints. Endpoints. Thank you. We'll go now. Then. Is that guy watching shit? He's fine without. Fuck. They uh, have to be uh, so big. Those uh, image files. What are those? Yeah, image they. Files? Yeah, so they. So those. So those, that's basically all the 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 Docker layers, really. So 
like um, uh, you'll have the two twenty uh, Ubuntu uh, layer, and then all the stuff that I've added on top will create its own layer as well. You can go upstairs, Mr. So I'll, I'll connect in a bit. Um, yes. Well, actually, uh, I don't know if the the change in the Docker file will make a, a big change, but uh, that uh, count here, that second count, it went all the way up to 700 seconds, so more than 10 minutes, and then I felt that does. there was no, no progress anymore. Oh, okay, yeah, so oh. the... This machine, it's, uh, I'm not sure what it's based on, but it's uh, seems very slow. Guys, we we gonna I'm I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to bail now, and we're gonna head up to the bedroom. There's someone watching his phone here without a thingy, but yeah, it's getting a bit noisier. So, um, but yeah, no, all that does is yeah, it's the the, the cooler stuff is quite is quite big because there's this yeah, it it's it's just what it is really. Um, it's just because it's got the toolkits and CUDNN and you know, all that sort of stuff. And that's even before we do any of our stuff. Yeah, yeah Mike, no worries. Um, take your time. Uh, enjoy the vacation. You're off now for two it's, weeks. Yeah, so, but I, I'm, I'll see how it goes, but I'm, I'm likely to kind of join you guys on a Sunday, though. Okay. So we'll just see, we'll just see if I can make it. Okay, so. Um, I, I might, I might not be as responsive as I usually am on Discord, but, um, but, but I'll try and make the meetings on a Sunday. Perfect. I'll try my best. Perfect. Wish you a nice vacation and. Oh, thank you. Don't swim too Thanks, far. Thanks, guys. Out. for you your right. help. Oh, it's a pleasure, mate. Anytime. Yeah, but we'll try and get you up and running as quickly as we can. I promise. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks. <clears throat> so, um, we have 20 minutes left and we can uh, discuss open topics if you want to. Um, the, 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 the actual for today and Matti is here. Um, I hope that Bob would show up today. He promised that he would. Um, yeah. So the idea, Mati, is that <clears throat> you, as the Passive Radar team, are creating a, a paper of, uh, setting up a paper, let's say, or two or three pages, a simple one, just the use of Passive Radar with Skyship 60. So anyone in, any one of the developers did that for their topic. And that's why it would be good if there is something like a paper from the Passive Radar team as well. I assume that most of the content can come from either Bob and you, Marty. And therefore, um, yeah, sure Ma Michael the Ghost will, will do kind of interview um, of... of I, yeah, that's a, that's a pity that Bob is not here today. Actually, I wanted to make this a topic today. Um, but maybe uh, Michael can uh, make an interview with you about your view of how passive radar shall be integrated in sky 60 so what is all needed from hardware from software and then finally integrated as a ROS node an active ROS node and what is needed on 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 the way there and um, yeah michael will then be so kind as to set up that paper based on this interview and he will also do the same with bob and yeah, maybe experience from from Joe as well, if he has if he has to to contribute as well. So at the end, then we shall have a, let's say a three three paper three page paper where developing can start from, so that we are all on the same page, knowing what hardware is needed, what library is needed, and, and what setup is needed, and so forth. Okay, sounds good. Michael, you. You will make contact with Mati and, and whenever you, yeah. you make a, yeah, um, an interview, please arrange between the two of you. Yeah, yeah well, that's what I was going to do. Is, um, and uh, like Matty, I was going to just DM you um, in another day or so. And, and uh, the things I'm going to be most interested in, just so you know, 
is kind of the uh, how do I want to put this? Um, I'm working on schizophrenic crack. On the one hand, I want kind of the short form, the kind of thing that goes like to a package that somebody's just doing a build and they just want to put it in and be done with it. But I also, I'm myself personally and so on, I'm much interested in, okay, here's all the sort of details so that if somebody wants to go back through it, and I think in terms like peer review, it's like, okay, this is what we did, this is how it works, and, you know, that kind of thing. And so kind of finding the balance in there um, can be tricky for, for me personally simply because, to me, everything's important. And, uh, you know, but that's, you know, in terms of just rolling it out the door, that's not necessarily true. So um, so that's the kind of thing I'm going to be interested in. And then, like, what versions of, of things you're running, you know, uh, like tool chains and that kind of thing. So, um, and again, it's it, like I said, it's kind of up to me to find that balance between, you know, okay, if you're just doing the build and all you want to know is the right answers, this is that track. And if you want to know, okay, here's what went on and what we're thinking about, then there's that track. So, so that's, that's the kind of thing I'm going to be looking for. Yep. So basically, um, just to, to, to inform you all, um, the idea is that, that Michael is setting up the whole documentation, meaning all those papers that already exist have to come in and be re rearranged in a, in a nice documentation, a development documentation, so that it is reproducible. So by anyone, another developer coming in, checking the documentation, knowing where his place is, what his topic is, how he can code, develop, what whatever the, the topic is. Yeah. Ah, Bertrand, il est super. On va faire oh, passer les trucs. Il est excellent. À tout. Bye. Aido, you want to say something? Yeah, uh, Michael, uh, do you have time Bertrand after this call? I'm sorry? Say again, do please. You have, do you have time after this call? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll call you. I'll, I'll, I have something. Uh, I have an idea. Okay. <laughs> Cool. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. All right. So that was on my list, the last topic. Um, Chris Dixon, nice to see you. Um, if you have any question, Chris, okay, you can't hear us probably. Oh, is he talking? I, I, I didn't hear anything. Michael not hearing anything. Doesn't, doesn't hear us. Okay. Anyway, so I'd say, guys, it's it's a quarter to to the hour. I'd say we wrap it up for the day. All right. Yeah. If there is anything, Lionel, you wanna add something? All right. No, I'm good. Uh, it's, it's cool that we uh, had this session. It's uh, it's really nice uh, to make some uh, progress in the near future as a. Just I'm just getting uh, finished with a big assignment mm -hmm. at work, and I should have more time in the coming weeks. Hey, cool. Hey, you did finish this project. Great. Um, I'm finishing something, and uh, now I should have a clear schedule. Cool. Good to have you on board again. Yeah. Okay, guys, I'm shutting down the recording.